everybody. Welcome. Bob the Sign Man here. Today we're going to take a little look at um, when you first start making signs. Obviously, you're going to need a computer, a program. We have went used to use Omega. Now we're using Flexi. It's a little complicated. I'm not, by all means, that proficient on it, but I have been getting by very well. So I'd like to share some of the things with you, how I'm using my Flexi. And when you start designing your own signs, making your own signs, when you get away from buying your own and making your own, it's a whole different world. Uh, let's jump in to see how are you going to do that? How are you going to make those signs and lay them out? I got some ideas and some tricks and some hacks coming up for you right now. It's kind of a little struggle at first for me to start. That's why I started my channel to kind of help out a, lot, a few people. And the momentum's picking up a little bit and I'm getting more and more subscribers, which I appreciate. And um, there's a lot of, of questions, you know, people are, well, how do I do this? How do I do that? What do I do? Um, it's all about networking. Go out there, see what you can do, trade some ideas. So first thing we did is we got a, problem, uh, a program called Gerber. Uh, then we upgraded our computer system and Gerber wouldn't work with it anymore. So we went to Flexi. Now, by all means, I'm not an expert on Flexi, but I'm learning every day, so I'd like to share some things with you. Um, one of the things that you're going to need is, a catalog, is a, like a catalog of signs that are already built for you. I mean, somebody comes up to you and goes, hey, we need a... Um, like I have, a, I found a sign that was damaged. It was a fire truck sign. Okay, I need a 30 inch fire truck sign. Well, where do I have, where do I find one? Well, I, I know some places I can go. I can come and look up, um, for example, let's look for a M-U-T-C-D fire truck sign. Okay, we're going to, well, and we'll click images. Well, there it is right there. That's what I need. Okay. Well, how do I get that to my program, to my cutter, so I can cut it out and use it? Easiest way, we have this. Um, we went ahead and just got the catalog of signs. You know, it, it does come at a cost. Um, you know, it, could, it runs anywhere from, you know, 1500 to $2,000, even up. But it's a, such a time saver. Let me show you. I'm going to be using just one screen. I have a double screen monitor set up in my um, shop, but I'm just going to have to, you know, mimonize stuff and show you. So all these signs are already pre-built in here, and it's um, it's been a godsend for me because I can just come in and pick stuff out. Like say I, the fire truck, I think it's a W11-8. There it is. I need the 30 inch. There's a 36. There's a 48. You can see it's cut out. But this is only for flexi. Um, I don't know if it'll open. I have a Gerber program and it doesn't want to open in Gerber. So this is, um, you'll have to get your category or your uh, catalog specific for the type of science that you're going to be using. Because if somebody comes up to you and they say, hey, we need to put this, uh, you know, like uh, low clearance sign up, how, how are you going to make that? So let me show you um, an easy way. And bring my flexi up like i said i'm just going to be using one screen i usually have a double screen monitor where i can have it wide so i need a fire truck so i'm going to come into my category or into my catalog that i already have made i want to open well all i have is a and they're the w's w11 series i had the fire truck but it's a 36 inch and i want to get the 30 inch so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come down to my sign library I'm going to look for the W11-8. See, they're all numbered. I'm W10. Uh, whoops, pass. Here we are, W11-8. There's a 30 by 30, 36 by 36, 48 by 48. Now, what you want to do is you don't want to just, if you drag this over to your desktop, like so, you can do that. But any change you make here is going to reflect here and you don't want to be changing those so much. So what I'm going to do is it's highlighted. See how it turns blue. So I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to right click it and I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to paste it. So there it is right there. There's my fire truck. Let me expand that a little bigger in order to get that bigger. I hold down on the control key and then I can scroll. So there's the fire truck. And it's 30 by 30, which it probably is going to put in the right size border that I'm going to need is a 1.875. So it's got the radius of the borders already in there and everything. 
So, but if I click it to send it over to the printer, um, it's just going to have the border. So I'll have to select the, uh, the fire truck and I'll have to come down and hit the shift key and select the border. And then I want to group those together. So next, and then I'm going to save this file. I want to uh, save as, and where do I want to save it? I want to save it under my W11 series. So it's a W11-8, uh, let's just put fire truck, fire truck crossing, and we'll put 30 inch. Thirty inch. I can't put the thirty inch with the uh, you know the little symbol there for thirty inches because it's, the file won't accept that. So, anyways, we're going to save that. Okay, so that's going to be in our file now. So now I, I've got these highlighted. Uh, I separated the outline on this one, so you can see you have the whole sign. So if you were just to pick this whole thing, and take it and send it off to your cutter, it's going to cut out. Um, Let's see, let's change this to 30 inch, there we go. So it's gonna um, try to cut out the border along with it too, and we don't wanna cut out the border along with that, which not really so much the border, but the outside of the sign, we don't need that outside of the sign. So make sure you're just selecting your border and your fire truck, and then we're gonna send that off to the cutter, and there it is. And then we can go ahead, and if you send that off to the cutter now that, you know, there's there's no cut lines in there. So let's put some cut lines in there. Anybody who's weeded or anything like that knows how the cut lines are um, pretty, pretty helpful. We'll just put some in here. Um, a couple more horizontal ones. Uh, throw another horizontal one in here. After you weed out stuff for a while you'll kind of know where you want some extra cut lines to, to make make it a little easier for you you, you can move these things by just um, see that little hand if you go like that then you can just hold down on your mouse and then you can move it and we'll put one more here so now all we can do is you just boom send it off to the cutter and it cuts okay and then we're going to come in here and we're going to click save one more time okay and we'll close it out. That was simple. Very simple. Your, your little dilemma is over. Now you come back in and you want to make that fire truck sign. Days later, month later, week later, the next day, whatever. You just come back in. We're going to click file. We're going to click open. And we're going to come down. Here's that 30 inch fire truck sign we wanted. So we're going to hit that. Uh, we're going to open that. Double click it. I hit my control and scroll and go down a little further. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to click the fire truck and see how it already highlighted all the uh, border and everything. And then we're going to send it off to the cutter. And since we saved it that last time on exit, the cut lines are still there. So we don't have to add more cut lines. So how easy is that? You come in, you need a 30 inch fire truck. And let's do that again. Uh, save changes yet. So we, we're going to come in. Um, you want that fire truck again, so you come to your file, and you're going to come open, and then you're going to find it in your file wherever you saved it, and then you're just going to double click it. Okay, there's my fire truck. Highlight the fire truck if it's not already highlighted, and see how it highlighted the border, and then you just send it off to the cutter. There you go. I mean, that took all of to send that open that sign since you've already saved it. Took all of five seconds. Where you're going to struggle, there's no way you're going to make that fire truck sign by laying it out. So let's do another one real quick. These, um, I have to make a truck sign. Okay, see this 36 inch truck sign? Let's just um, do this. Instead of, if we just open it, we're going to change that file in there. So we're not going to open that. We're going to copy it and we're going to bring it over here and we're going to paste it. So this is an actual sign I have to make. And I'm going to go ahead and expand this out so we can see a little easier. So this is an actual sign that I'm going to have to make. Okay. Um, what was that? That was the... I'm going to write that down so I don't forget that number. Okay, so we have to make this R5-2. 
Okay, so there it is. I drug it over, I copied it, and you think, great, all I have to do is click it and send it over. Well, not so easy. You've got two colors in there. She said, well, I'll just send the black over and then I'll send the red over. Okay, another problem is, okay, let's separate that border, get that border out of there. We want to separate everything. Okay, so we can come up here and this is the ungroup tool. So we'll ungroup everything. Okay, so there's our truck. It's grouped. There's our, our um, border. So if we click that and that, and we think, great, we're just going to send that off to the cutter. Look what happens. Okay, you got the border. Now let's change that to, since I changed it 36, I'm going to change the, that um, size of my roll to 36. So that's basically what my cutter is going to look at. So now you got the truck slash symbol, and you got to think, well, okay, I, there's my truck. No problem. Well, there is a problem because now you have that red slash growing through. You can't run that red slash over the uh, truck because it's not going to work. So you think, okay, well, here's what I'll do. Here's an easy workaround solution. When I get my red stripe, I'll, I'll put the truck on, then I'll just take my knife and I'll, I'll cut out the, slat, the part where the truck don't go. Well, you can do that too. Sometimes that's a lot of extra work. Um, easy solution to that is let's just do this. We're going to take our truck. Okay, highlight your truck. Hold down on your um, shift key and we're going to highlight the um, red slash that goes through, okay? And then we're going to come up to the effects where it says combine. We're going to come down and we're going to see where it says cut out. Okay, we're just going to cut that out. Okay, so now uh, we've separated us, this truck now. We've split it in half and you think, oh my goodness, I've lost that red slash. Uh, not so quick. You can always left click, paste, and there's our original back. Or you can go back and get the original, however you, you, know, you need to do that. Uh, let me move that over a little bit. Okay, so now we've got that that separated. So now that our red slash, let's just um, separate that whole thing right there again. Um, there's my ungroup tool right there. So now I can take my red slash and I can bring it over here. And that red slash is kind of centered in there. So what I want to do is I want to take all of this, hold down on your shift key. See how those highlighted red? red. Okay, so now I've got my outside border, which I really don't need, but I'm going to just leave it there for now. I got the border, and then I got the red slash. Hold down on your control and hit the um, number five key. Not the F5, but the number five key. And see how that just centered everything that you had highlighted. Now, this black is going to appear when you cut it out. You lay it out. And then the red slash will go right through there and it'll reflect through. One little thing about it though, is see how close those lines are? I mean, those are, you're gonna have to be really, really close at that. What I've done before in the past is I've, I've gone in there, laid that slash out, then I've gone in there and trimmed it with an X-Acto knife so I could leave a little slash for it to go in. But also I found out an easy way to do that is I'll hit my truck, okay? And I'm gonna ungroup everything there. It should be, um, I want to separate, okay, here's what I'll have to do. Right here, it's not going to let you um, unseparate those two pieces of the truck. So what, what I'll do, highlight the truck, see how it turned it red around there. I'm going to um, right click on my mouse and see where it says separate cutout. I want to click that, okay? So now each one of these little pieces of the truck is separate, okay? So now what I'm going to do is with my little arrow keys, you know, there's one that points left, right, and then up and down. It's like a little four little keys separated there. I'm just going to click that over, like say two clicks. One, two, and let's go up two. One, two, okay. So I'll go over two. Now this one I'll go down two. One, two. Okay, now see that left a nice little, little gap in there um, so that my truck, it, it, it'll help me lay this out better. Um, I've got a little um, separation there. So when I lay out the black and then I go to put the red over it, I can get that red in there just perfect. And now the red is going to show up through there because if you lay that red reflective um, EC film over the black, it's not going to show up at night. It's going to look horrible, even in the daytime. So that's a little way to separate those. It, it, it's a little bit um, more, I can't say more complicated, but it's a little workaround 
versus putting the red slash over and then just trying to manually cut out the piece of the truck. So there's a little um, tip on that for flexi. I don't want to get too overwhelmed people with this, but so that's that's an, another way I work. I can work around these. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to get rid of this. I don't need this anymore. Okay. So I'm going to delete that. Now I'm going to highlight the black here. Hold down on my shift. Highlight this black, this black, and up here is the group tool right here. I'm going to group all those together. So now. If I hit this without hitting that outside, you don't need this outside border is actually your sign blank that's white, right? But I don't need that. All I need is that, and I've grouped that. And then when I send it off to my cutter, now it's got my border and it's got the truck already with the slash through it. Okay. So now I can send that off to my cutter and it'll cut it out. You can add in your cut marks if you want and everything. Um, Let's just add in a few cut marks to make it easy here. I mean, that's going to be such an easy piece to weed out. I'll just throw in a couple more for the heck of it. Well, that, that's going to be easy. That'll be easy to weed out. And then we'll just click. Uh, we're going to get out of that. Okay. And then uh, periodically save your stuff as you go along. So we're going to save this truck in the um, it's an R5. So go go back into where you save your designs at. So I know I have R's. Okay, mine's an R5. See, I don't have any R5 series. So I'm going to come to a new folder. And I'm going to go with R5 series. C-R-I-E-S. Okay. So I want to open the R5 series. And we're going to save this as a... R5-2, no trucks, C-K, trucks with slash S. And that's a 36 inch. So there you go. Now we're just going to save that. So now periodically as we make any changes, we can save it. So like I said, we've already sent the black off to the cutter. We have our black. That's no problem. Now we're going to come into our, our design again, and we're going to click the red slash, and we're just going to hit our, our um, cutter to send it off to the cutter. And those red slashes come out pretty easy. All you have to do is um, see this outside border. It's going to, it's going to cut that. So when I Pull it out. All I have to do is pull that, pull that, pull that out, pull that out. I really don't need any um, any horizontal cut lines in there at all. So that's going to work out just perfect. So we'll cut that out. So there you go. I mean, how would you make that sign otherwise? Um, you, you know, you might have an easier way. You might say, well, instead of doing all that extra computer work, I'm just going to go ahead and um, cut that out. But just think, every time you make that sign, you have to cut that blackout so you can put the red slash through it might take you a few seconds longer on the computer to do it versus cutting out the slash it might be easier for you but i find it's just easier to get it done with on the computer and then we're ready to go again so we close this out so that's the easiest way to do those when you have the slashes so don't freak out when you have stuff like that that happens to you, you just got to deal with it um like i said it's a really good um program just like if you had to make this sign here, for example, there's a lot of little things going on here. I wouldn't even know how to begin to make it. So I'm just going to come in, copy, bring it over here, paste. Uh, let's bring that down to a workable size. Okay, you got all that stuff going on there. Um, I'm going to. I want to. Um, I highlighted the outside. I'm going to ungroup it all. So now if I touch anything, it's just going to touch whatever. So go back in again, select everything, hold down on your shift key, get rid of that outside line, see how we did that. Just come up to the group, the save thing. Come back in, you're going to save it as a um, whatever it is. And then what you're going to do is once that's done, that's a 46, it gives you your size up here. See where my cursor is, follow it over here. That's the size of the sign. Um, it already told you in the catalog, I believe here, 
uh, what size it is. No, it didn't really tell you the size, but usually some of these signs are specific only to a certain size. So anyway, so there's the sign you're going to make. You can, you know, make whatever size you want, but look how easy that was. Otherwise, to try to lay that thing out, that's going to be a nightmare. And then all I'm going to do, click the select, uh, add my cut lines, whatever I want. Click send, sends it off to my cutter. I'm done. That is so easy to um, do those. And when I shut this out, no, I don't want to save any changes because I'm probably never going to use that sign again. Um, so with this sign library, all, all these signs are just unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's well worth it to do um, get a sign library. This is going to take so much pressure off of you, and it's going to make your job so much easier in the long run, you think, well, that's an awful big expense. But, you know, setting up your own shop to, to make signs, it's a lot of expense. It's a, it's a long-term long investment, and it starts paying off right away. With the very first sign that you guys make, it's going to start paying off, especially buying this sign library, because look at how quick that is. I mean, I can come in here and just, um, I need to make uh, the, the, this one here. So we're going to copy it. It's R3-17. And we come back into Flexi. So we copied it. We pasted it. Um, we, we come in here. Um, we're going to... Oh, this one here. See, once I highlighted it, it didn't highlight um, the uh, outside of the thing. So you just come in here. You're going to highlight that. Uh, touch this. Touch that. And we're going to send that off to the cutter. And boom, there it is right there. I mean, simple. So easy. All righty. Well, there's a little tip on how I um, lay out my signs. A lot of people ask me, where do you lay out your signs? So that's a um, layout for Flexi. Now let me open up one of my other programs that we used to use. This is my old program we used to use, at Gerber um, Omega. Five, I think it's 5.0. Um, still pretty proficient in it. I use it once in a while. I still haven't forgot everything about it. Um, so, and here's the downfall of having, a, okay, so I have Flexi. Now this is the old Gerber and suppose I wanted to make uh, this sign here. That, that'd be a nightmare to make. So if I try to drag it over here like we did before, unknown file type. So even if I copy it, Um, paste here, unknown file type. So it's not going to read. It's not going to read it. So it's not going to let me bring that over into um, into the composer, which is the Gerber Omega 5.0. I think we were using. So you have to have Flexi in order for. I don't want to save that change. In order for this sign library to work, it it's only works with Flexi. Um, but it it's just been a, a valuable tool. Alrighty, well, I don't want to jump in too much and get everybody totally confused, but this is something that you really need to think about is getting a sign library that's specific to your program, okay? Don't just say, hey, where'd you get your Flexi um, layout, and then you buy it, and then you say, hey, we spent all these thousands of dollars, and it doesn't work on RSP. you got to make sure that your, category, your catalog that you buy is specific to your program, and whoever sent, sold you your software should be able to tell you you know, direct you where to buy it. Sometimes they even have it. And I think we got this from our supplier who um, supplied us with all of our other stuff. So anyways, uh, valuable, valuable tool. I highly recommend it. Alrighty, catch you on the next exciting episode of Bob the Sign Man. <laughs>